So good morning, everybody. My name is Zach Hules, and I'm here at the NAFA headquarters in Falls Church, Virginia. I'm joined here on Zoom with Kevin Ross. Uh, yes, Oscar, good morning. Uh, and we are starting week two of our advisor ambassador program for March. Uh, so if you guys would like during the presentation, you can share your video and um, also ask questions. Um, I do ask though that you ask the questions in the chat or the key or the, uh, yeah, it's just chat function below, and we can get to them at the end of the presentation. Um, the topic for today is build your professional network of mentors and industry colleagues. And uh, Kevin is currently snowed in in Colorado, but I think he's going to uh, warm us all up with this presentation. So um, Kevin, without further ado, go ahead. Thanks, Zach. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone today. I am excited to, uh, to speak on something that I'm passionate about, which is growing our uh, professional network and our mentors inside of the industry. So let me get to my slideshow here. I'm sorry for this. Get it going here. All right. So again, I'm gonna talk on building your professional network and mentors in the industry. Uh, a little background on myself. I uh, started out of college after my finance degree as a financial planner in the industry. And I did that for several years before I did a slight career path and changed to owning an insurance agency with American Family Insurance. I've been doing that for roughly uh, 15 years. And while I became an agent with American Family Insurance. I had a gentleman grab me by the arm one day and said, if you're gonna be a professional in this industry, first thing you need to do is become a NAFA member. And he signed me up at my first meeting and I haven't looked back. I've been a NAFA member since 2005. I've been a member of the Young Advisor team or the YAT team since then. And actually in 2017 was uh, named the National Young Advisor Agent of the Year. So that's been quite an honor. I've been involved in my community. Uh, I believe giving back is really important to what we do. And I've been the mayor of my community since 2016, so it is a high honor. I've coached high school football, but one of my greatest accomplishments, I believe, is really being a husband and a father. I've been married for uh, going on 19 years, and I got two beautiful daughters uh, in the family, and that keeps me busy. So what I wanna go over today is simply why do I need to build a network? Uh, who should be in that network? Where can I go and look for my network? How can I create the optimum network? Because believe it or not, there are bad ones out there. And then how do I cultivate that and keep that fresh and keep that growing with what I'm doing in the industry? So the first thing I wanna talk about is why do I wanna build a professional network? Well, it may seem easy to some of you, but maybe not. But for me, it's all about the money, 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 right? And I joke because that's why we all get into this business is we uh, have aspirations of making, you know, a great financial outcome for ourselves and our families. But it's not the only reason we get into this business. Part of what we do in this business is to serve our clients. And when we're serving our clients, what we try and offer them is the best service that we possibly can, but we're trying to do it in an ethical manner. Part of when we build this professional network, what I wanna to touch on is you really have to be able to put your personal ego and self pride to the side. It takes some in-depth analysis of yourself to determine what am I strong at and where do I have some weaknesses? And we'll go into that in a second. Because if I'm truly going to do the best job for my client, I need to recognize that I am not right for all of my client's aspects or needs. And I may not be right for every client. And that's where building that professional network comes into play, to fill those gaps, to fill those holes. Who should be in my network? Well, it comes down to, I need to figure out what are my strengths? What are my products good at? What am I good at? Who am I good with dealing with? I have a certain personality and that personality I have tends to attract various individuals to me. It doesn't attract everybody, but not everybody is attracted to everybody else. That's what makes us all unique in this business. 
my products aren't right for everybody. So that's where we start looking at weaknesses. I've got a great whole life product when we talk about life insurance needs, but that whole life policy isn't best for everybody. If you're looking for something with more bells and whistles that maybe has long-term care in it, uh, can do more things with that cash value inside of it, my product isn't going to be the best whole life policy for you out on the market. However, if you're looking for something that's uh, you know highly rated inside Moody's or AM Best, and you're looking for something that's very conservative but guaranteed with that strength, maybe I do have the right product for you. Lastly, who can I trust? When we start building this network, trust is a big thing. Because when you're taking care of your clients, you're putting your reputation on the line, you're putting your business on the line. When you have a bad experience, it's going to magnify and manifest out there and it's going to hurt you. So that's why it's important that when you build that network and you're going to utilize it for your client's benefit, that it's strong and it's with people you can trust and know are going to take care of your clients and have their best interests in heart. So when it comes down to my strengths, I really feel it's best to do that honest assessment of what I'm good at, right? I'm really good at digging into a person's financial portfolio and seeing their broader scope. I'm a multi-line agent, so I'm able to handle many things from not only their life insurance needs, but I can handle their home and auto insurance. And I feel like I have a good read on the market and what's going on because of how I'm plugged in uh, politically and uh, through NAFA as to learning what products are coming about and how the industry's being affected. I bring up this next slide as my weaknesses, right? Again, what gaps do I have in coverage? What gaps do I have in staff? What gaps do I have in personality that may not best fit all the clients in the market? On the right is just a generic SWOT analysis. If you haven't heard of a SWOT analysis, it simply stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, having everything in strengths and opportunities is great, but you shouldn't have all of your, excuse me, Cheerios in a bowl in that same, both of those lines. Having weaknesses and threats is not a bad deal because what it does is it helps you determine how you can better help your clients. And this may come into play when you're picking out your professional network as to how you fill those gaps on your weaknesses or possible threats. Now, Again, I'm a good multi-line agent and I've been doing this for a while, but I'm not going to be able to offer, offer excuse me, a financial portfolio to my clients, such as some of my partners that I've created can. They're financial planners and they have access to full portfolios and maybe some different insurance products that I don't that can better suit my needs. It is so important that I build that group so that I can address my weaknesses and threats and turn them into opportunities and strengths. Who can I trust? This is really big for me. When you're working with your peer group and you're working with these mentors and you're working with growing this professional network, I feel trust is the most key virtue we can look in as we're finding that group. How do I find those people? Well, referred colleagues is one place to start. When I started in this business, I was oh so excited to make friends, start writing life insurance apps. I remember my first week in the business, I was all excited and I wrote my first application, collected my first check, had my first signatures, and then I sat there and go, how the heck do I process this thing? I was at a loss, but I was able to reach out to some other agents and ask them and start building camaraderie with them being fully able to admit I didn't know everything. And they were welcome, they are very welcoming, excuse me, and sharing on how to go through those processes. Well, those relationships grew and we were able to refer some business back and forth to each other through that. Another big way to find out people I can trust in this business is through designations. NAFA has their LACP designation there's many other chartered life underwriters out there. There's uh, certified financial planners. List goes on and on and on. If you find an individual with designations behind their name, what that says to me and should say to you 
is this is an individual who's really a professional about what they do. They're trying to continually educate themselves on the industry and do what's best for their client. And so I think there's some strong uh, indicators is that's a person I could trust when they have those designations behind their name. Who should be in my network? Well, again, if we go back to that SWOT analysis, I should very easily be able to see what I'm not able to do for my clients, but what they may have a need of doing. Tax attorneys, how can we help take care of their estate? If they're high net worth individuals, maybe a different type of tax attorney as well. Accountants, when we're dealing with the monies and uh, how their retirements work and maybe the size of their business, having a good accountant that I can work with is very worthy to me, it's very worthy to my clients. And being able to refer them, I can't tell you how many accountants are, are, that I work with, but my clients appreciate that. Realtors, being a multi-line agent, a lot of times I'm the first to know that my clients are looking at moving because they may have found a house on Zillow or wherever they're looking and they'll go, Kevin, could you run me a quote on that? And by the way, who's a good realtor? So it's important to have a realtor in my pocket that I can refer to my clients. Bankers, so that my clients know where to have their money at and other financial insurance professionals. I've had the blessing of working inside a NAFA and meeting some great financial professionals that I can trust. I'm able to call them up and say, hey, Blake or Corey or Jason, can I refer this person to you? They've got some serious financial needs and I know I can trust them. Anywhere I go, people I do business with, those are the types of people I can trust. The great thing about this network is it doesn't just work one way. It works both ways. Not only do I refer individuals to all of these people on the screen, they refer business to me. And that's kind of that mutual uh, relationship that we grow. Where do I go to build my network? First of all, I'm gonna start off with professional organizations and I'm gonna give a big plug for NAFA. Again, I shared with you, I started my career and was brought into NAFA shortly at, thereafter. NAFA has given me more as an agent, more than I could ever dream of possibly giving back. It's helped me grow in this business and to this day, I truly believe I make more money than my non-NAFA counterparts. It's given me education and it's giving me a broad network of people to reach out to when I have say difficulties in solving one of my clients problems. Networking groups are awesome. Uh, sometimes you need to be careful. I've been in networking groups where I was the only one providing contacts and really wasn't getting anything back. So you need to do honest assessments of those networking groups. Your own clients, your own clients come from a broad array of professional uh, livelihoods. They're going to be great. They can, you can cultivate those relationships into friendships and your professional network so that you can help continue to grow your business. If you do a good job for your clients, they're going to refer you and also help you grow your business. And again, those referrals from your clients or colleagues are really where I've grown my business in the most, I guess, professional way. I don't like doing cold calls. I'm gonna bit, do a big plug down here. You'll see our uh, national conference here in Orlando. That's coming up in September. I started going to these, uh, I don't know, 12 years ago. It's given me an opportunity to meet professionals across the country that have a wide variety of areas that they specialize in. Every time I go to this conference, it's chocked full of learning classes and seminars to where I can sharpen my ax and become a better agent. But it's also helped me to grow a great network of friends that I can call on a moment's notice to ask how to solve a client's problem or refer to. How do I create that optimum network? Well, that's very simple. You got to find professionals that you can trust, which I've already talked on a bit. Find professionals that complement your style. Again, my style of doing business is going to be different from your style. And that's great. That's what makes us all unique. And there's plenty of business to go around for everybody. But if you find individuals that complement how you work with clients, it's just going to make that that much more seamless for your clients to work with. And it's going to help you out 
and learning how to tailor make your products uh, fit, fit your clients. Only use those individuals who are not going to poach your clients. I'm going to stress this point. It's one of the biggest fears people have when growing a network. That all goes back to trust, but you need to have an agreement set up. So that if I have a client that I've taken care of, say their life insurance needs and their home and their auto, and I refer that to my professional friend that's going to do their financial planning, I need to know and trust that he's not going to then try and take over that home and auto and life insurance business that I just wrote. They, would, they shouldn't if they're doing the best thing for that client's needs. Here's a big thing. Hold your network to a high ethical standard. Inside of NAFA, we have our ethical code of conduct that we all try and adhere to. But if you're going to hold yourself to a high standard, you need to hold your professional network to a high standard. Nothing could kill your client relationship more than having some sleaze bag that you've referred them to not do the best thing for them or have something detrimental going on inside of their business. I put up here a picture of my friends from NAFA. This is our last trip out to Washington DC back in December. When I talk about our network, it's not just good to get it started. It's how do you cultivate that and keep that going? This group here, Jason, John, uh, Corey, and Carl, they're a group that I can call on at any time. We all specialize in different areas, whether it's financial planning, long-term care, uh, different multi-line products, or the guy on the right's my lobbyist. But what's important when you build this network is you need to stay in contact. Just touch and base with them once and then trying to refer them business or expecting them to refer you business is not gonna work. Send this group notes, right? Whether that's a text message or a quick email just saying, hey, how you doing? How are the wife and kids? It's important to continue to grow that network. When you do refer business, don't hesitate to give the full information about the client and what they're working on. And these guys have become my friends because we got to know each other personally, right? We're not just agents. We're persons. We're people. We have lives, right? We have kids that we're taking to basketball games or volleyball games, and we're able to really, you know, just cultivate that relationship. Here's a big thing I want to touch on. These networks that you are trying to grow, they take time. They aren't going to happen overnight in most cases. In fact, they're going to take multiple months, if not years, to grow and be a real strong relationship when you're, when you're building this network. Hold each other accountable. Don't be afraid to follow up and ask that person who you just referred business to, did you follow up with John and Sue Smith that I gave you? Okay, how'd that go? And if they haven't, hold them accountable for doing it. All right. Here's a nice worksheet I created for everybody and feel free to use this. Um, this is something that works not only in business, but it can work in any arena you want to grow your financial or professional network in or even your personal network. It's easy. What area do I want to grow? Well, I use this even to grow my political center of influence. How will this help me? Put down a defined goal of what you're really trying to achieve from these centers of influence that you want to cultivate. Then you need to identify who are the top three most influential people inside of that circle that I'm trying to grow, right? I've, I've already said what my goal is. Who can I most contact that's going to help me grow inside of there? What events can I attend to get to know these targeted individuals? Well, if I go back to me wanting to grow this in my political circle and political sphere, I went to fundraisers, I went to uh, campaign events, I went to everywhere so that I become a regular face that individuals are used to seeing and they don't feel threatened. Break down those barriers. Who are the assistants that help these key individuals that I'm trying to get in touch with? A lot of time, those assistants are the gatekeepers or even more valuable and knowledgeable than the center of influence themselves because the center of influence relies on them so much that you're able to get more done because they have that strong ear. And then how can I follow up with those targeted individuals? 
Is it by going to more events? Is it by sending a text message? Is it by reaching back out to those key individuals that assist them? This sheet here, I think, is really valuable, and it can help you grow these centers of influence and professional networks that we're all trying to grow. At this time, I'd like to open it up to questions, should anybody have them, because I think I'm happy to help out in any way I can. I'm always available offline. There's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me, and I do appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much, Kevin. It's fantastic. And uh, you know, I gotta say that that SWOT analysis, I've never seen anything like it. That's it's a really good way to keep yourself self accountable. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, unmute yourself or uh, share your video screen and um, go ahead and ask. We must have knocked it out of the park. I guess so. Good. <laughs> uh, thanks for the feedback, Cheryl. It's uh, really great. And thank you everyone who joined us today. I um, hope you learned something and uh, feel free to reach out to Kevin or reach out to myself at recruitment at nafa.org. Um, we'll be available to help you in any way possible. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a fantastic Thursday um, and a great weekend. Thanks everybody. Bye. Take care.